Rice Chex and Wheat Chex, the bite-sized cereals in the red and white checkerboard packages present Space Patrol! <laughs> High adventure in the wild, vast reaches of space. Missions of daring in the name of interplanetary justice. Travel into the future with Buzz Corey, Commander-in-Chief of the Space Patrol! <laughs> In today's transcribed Space Patrol adventure, Buzz and Happy are walking through a warehouse at the Terra Spaceport where two suspected criminals are standing by the controls of a loading crane. That sanker, all right, Commander? Yes, I wonder just how much of that cargo up there on the crane is stolen. Probably plenty of it. Uh-oh. He sees us. Uh, just a minute, Zankar. Release that holding brake. Drop the load on them. Look out, Hap. Move! <laughs> We'll return in just a moment with today's exciting Space Patrol adventure, Formula for Crime. The winner, by unanimous decision, Rachel! Yes, sir, you Space Patrollers, Rice Checks is a three-count winner. Tops them all three ways. Tops for taste. Sunny gold shredded rice toasted three times for that luscious, fresh from the oven flavor. A triple treat, a super treat. Out of your breakfast bowl, out of the red and white checkerboard box for snacks. Tops for size. Bite sized biscuits. Modern in design. 3D because they're hollow inside. Fill right up with milk or cream. Streamlined for easy, breezy eating. Tops for get up and go. The kind of get up and go that helps to make you a winner by a wide margin. A real space patroller like Commander Corey and Cadet Happy. So, gang, why don't you win with a winner? Start eating rice checks right now. For breakfast, out of the bowl. For snacks, out of the box. Be a go getter. Go get rice checks. And for a neat whole wheat treat, go get wheat checks. Bite size and power rich. A real winner because it's tops for taste, tops for size, tops for get up and go. Look for rice checks and wheat checks in the red and white checkerboard boxes with the picture of Commander Corey or Cadet Happy on the outside. And now, today's Space Patrol adventure, Formula for Crime. Are you in the market for Jupiter Jade? Are you trying to locate a set of Martian silverware? You need a pair of horns from a Venus water buffalo. Then one visit to the office of Interplanet Procurement Corporation will solve your problems. At least so is the claim of Eric Zanker, president of the firm. If you ask Mr. Zanker what channels he uses or what methods he employs to obtain these out-of-the-ordinary items, he will smile mysteriously and murmur something about trade secrets. At this moment in his office on Terra, Eric Zanker is not smiling, and his tone as he speaks to chemist Gant Hanlon is pitched somewhat above a murmur. You're an idiot, Conlon. If you think the space patrol is following you, why did you come here? Now, now, wait a minute, Mr. Zanker. Let me finish. I'm only following your orders, Mr. Zanker. You told me to come here and report as soon as I found out how Alpha Chemical was shipping out that vitrolytic acid. Well, just be careful, Conlon. Uh, did you get that information? Uh, it's all written down. I've marked the best point in the shipment. Good. I'll work out a plan of attack later. Now, about the special formula. Uh, one of the lab chemists was working on it several months ago. He's got it locked up. Well, if it will do what you say it will, we've got to have it at any cost. Can you bribe this girl, this Marty Randall? Mm-hmm. Let me work on it, Banker. I'll come up with that. In the experimental laboratory of the Alpha Chemical Company, Gant Hanlon waits until the other technicians have left. Then he speaks to Mardis Randall. I'm going to knock off for dinner. How about you, Marty? Well, thanks. I'll work a while longer, Mr. Conley. We're over time an hour already. Take 30 minutes. Stockholders of Alpha Chemicals will never miss it. I happen to be interested in this experiment, Mr. Conley. I can't leave now. I'm right at a critical point in this test. Yeah, that's the trouble with you, Marty. You're always at a critical point. What about that experiment you were working on two weeks ago? You worked night after night on your own time, then shelved it. All that time wasted digging your way into a blind eye. In pure research, Mr. Conlon, there are no blind alleys. Behind every blank wall is a new truth. Yeah. And while you're tearing down blank walls, the front office is yelling, Get on with the project! <laughs> Discovery of yours, uh... Oh, the one you locked up, what was it about? I'd rather not discuss it right now, Mr. Conlon. 
It's a new chemical, one that can deaden the highest centers of the brain. Why? Isn't it unethical to read someone else's private lab notes, Mr. Conlon? Look, kid, I'm on your side. You got a gold mine there. Turn it over to the psychiatrist, and you can make a fortune. It hasn't been thoroughly tested. And anyway, I'm looking for alpha chemical. The discovery isn't mine to sell. Well, if it belongs to alpha chemical, why don't you turn the data over to the front office? Why hold out on it? I'm not holding out. I discovered formula G3. Right. Formula G3. What? I see you know my private code. Sir. Well, all right. I discovered formula G3K by accident while I was working on another project. But it's potentially dangerous until I find a way to control its effects on keeping it locked up. But, Marta, as a scientist, it isn't your responsibility to invent a remedy for the possible bad effects of your discovery. Is it your responsibility to tell me my responsibility? Now you just get the pig head. That's the thanks I get for trying to tell you how it makes it. Mr. Conlon, I'm frankly not interested in real money, as you call it. Not on formula D C K. I think you really mean that. All right, Monas, be your company girl. Let your brains and youth and good lucks boil away in those test tubes and beakers. Someday you'll wish you listened to me. I'm going out and get something to eat. The following morning in Space Patrol Headquarters on Terra... Commander Corey receives a visit from Mardis Randall. Yes, Miss Randall. I've received a report on the fire and explosion in the Alpha Chemical Company lab. Happy you find that building for me. Yes, sir. As I recall, Miss Randall, the report listed the cause as accidental. That's what the lab superintendent decided, Commander. And you think differently, Brother? Well, I don't know. When I came to work this morning and saw the damage, it looked like an accidental fire. Here it is, Commander. Uh, the report says probable cause, defective wiring, and temporary test circuit. A failure of thermostat control. Exact cause undetermined due to almost total destruction of laboratory. Signed by your lab superintendent and our inspector. They could be right. Perhaps I'm making things complicated. Go on, Miss Lancaster. Well, there was a metal cabinet in the lab where I kept some private records and chemicals. The heat had damaged the inside of the cabinet, exploded most of the containers. Yes? I think something was missing from that cabinet. Not destroyed by heat, just plain missing. That's right, Commander. You see, I've been working privately on a substance I call formula G3K. If used properly by doctors and psychiatrists, it could be of great benefit to science. How? Oh. It deadens the higher control centers of the brain without affecting the sensory or the motor nervous system. Under the influence of this chemical, a person would behave on a purely emotional basis. He would react according to basic instincts or his conditioned reflexes. And the doctor could tell how a person wants to react or... How he would react if he weren't held back by reason or conscience. Exactly. It could be a quick way to determine personality conflict. You mean if I wanted to slug somebody, I'd go right ahead and do it and not worry about what people would think? Well, that's a good rough example. Naturally, a doctor would never like to get into trouble. Oh, no. But in the wrong hands, this chemical could be used for evil purposes. Its effects make a person subject to suggestion. And they do things against their better judgment. Yes. For a time, their better judgment wouldn't exist. That's why I kept Formula G3K a secret, until I found a way to control it. Miss Randall, you think someone may have stolen this formula and started the fire in an attempt to cover up the theft? Yes, I do. Who else besides yourself knew about that formula? One of the lab technicians. Only last night he tried to talk me into selling it. He got rather angry when I refused. What's this man's name? Conley. Gant Conley. But I, I have no proof that he did anything wrong. But don't worry, Miss Randall. We'll check up on Gant Conley. If he's innocent, he hasn't anything to fear. At the office of the Interplanetary Procurement Corporation, behind locked doors, Gant Conlon shows a notebook to Eric Zanker. Before them, on the desk, is a plastic bottle containing a violet-colored liquid. Well, there you are, Mr. Zanker. Complete facts of the formula. G, B, K. How to use it, what it does, and how to make it. That's fine, Conlon. But, uh, will it be Miss? That's quite important, you know. You should see that lab. After I took what I wanted out of the cabinet, I fixed things so that accidental fire would destroy all of you. Good. Now, how do we administer this stuff and uh, skip the scientific details? An ordinary ultrasonic infuser will do the trick. Unless the victim sees the gadget, he won't even know what's happening. And then he'll do anything we tell him after the treatment? Just read Martis Randall's experiments. Formula G3K will make him tell us anything we want to know or perform any act we suggest right away. Before we put it into practical use, I want to make a few tests. 
And Mars will be an ideal place. Why Mars? First, because it's several million views from Corey's headquarters here on Terra. Second, because one of my ships is now being loaded at the spaceport. When it's ready to blast off for Mars, we'll be aboard. Buzz and Happy are walking through warehouse number five at the Terra spaceport. Cargo is being hoisted from platforms by giant loading cranes and placed on cargo trucks that will take them to waiting space freighters. This sure is a busy place, Commander. The man didn't know his way around. He could get hurt awful easy. Keep inside the yellow line. You'll be okay. This is Section 4 we're passing now. The next one is Anchor. Maybe Martis Randall's suspicions of Conlon weren't wrong after all. Maybe that he'd be having so many dealings with Zanker when Conlon's just a lab technician for Alpha Chemical. There's Zanker, Happy, standing on a platform up ahead. While I'm talking to him, you take that list and check the cargo. Yes, sir. With Zanker personally supervising the loading, he's probably got some hijacked stuff in there. Well, one more truckload out to do it, Conlon. Then we can blast off for more. Where's the crane operator? Oh, he's knocked off for a few minutes. Anyway, that's our last load out there. Hanging from the train? Yeah. When the next empty truck pulls out, we lower the load and the job's finished. Believe me, I'll be glad when we blast off the miles. I Come on. Turn this way, Chris. No. It looks like trouble. Here comes Corey and the kidnap. You better get out of here. Wait. If we run now, they never us for sure. Well, what else are we going to do? Since we aren't here to invite us for a lunch, the officer. Just take it easy. Look. A few more steps, and they'll be right under the crane. There's about six tons of cargo out there, right over their heads. Mike, are you crazy? That's Shut up! Get out of the way. All I've got to do is release this holding weight and the load drop. Look, I'm getting out of this right now. I never figured You're out... in this with me. In a couple of seconds, we'll both get away. Thank you, I want to talk to you. Here it goes! <laughs> We'll return to Space Patrol in just a moment. This is Dick Tufel reporting on the twin jet Air Force fighter, the McDonnell Voodoo XF-88A. In a moment, we'll hear from the noted test pilot who flies this plane, Phil Houghton. Speed of the Voodoo is a military secret, but it's plenty fast. Wingspan is 40 feet, length 55, weight 10 tons. And now, Phil Houghton recorded at Lambert Airfield. After seeing the voodoo, I guess you know why I like my job. There's one thing about it, though. The test pilot has to stay in good condition, get lots of sleep, and eat good, healthy food. That's why I like rice checks and wheat checks for breakfast. They've got plenty of energy in them, and they really taste well. I think you'll like them, too. Make sure you stay in condition the way Phil Houghton, J. Ray Donahue, Jr., and other top test pilots do. Every morning, eat a good, nourishing breakfast, with rice checks or wheat checks, the cereals that are tops three ways. Tops for taste, for size, for real get up and go. That's checks, rice or wheat. Remember, they're tops with America's top pilots. And now back to our space patrol adventure formula for crime. Buzz and Happy go to a warehouse at the Terra spaceport, where Zanker is supervising the loading of a spaceship. As the space patrollers walk under a loading crane, Zanker releases the holding brake, and the six-ton load of cargo hurtles down upon them. That's Zanker, all right. We'll have Look to... out, have food! Huh? I... It's a rocket. If you had to push me out of the way, I'd be under that mess. You're okay, Happy. Let's get Zanker. Yes, sir. Hey, he's gone. He can't be very far away. What's that? The emergency alarm. Somebody must have turned it in when, when the cargo dropped. Zanker deliberately tried to drop that load on us. The whole warehouse is in an uproar. Look, people are rushing in all directions. We'll never find Zanker in this mess. Get to a phone, Happy. We'll alert Space Patrol headquarters. Come on. A few hours later at Space Patrol headquarters, Buzz and Happy stand by for reports from the Space Patrol agents who are searching the spaceport and other parts of Terra for Zanker and Conlon. Nothing on either of them yet, Happy. I think I must have got away from the spaceport before we could alert the guards. At least they can't leave the planet. Space Control has orders to have every private freight and passenger ship checked before clearing for blast off. Maybe he was with Zanka. I don't know. We've got three men watching Zanka's office. If he or anybody else shows up, they'll be mad. Space Patrol headquarters, Commander Corey here. This is Mardis Randall. 
I'm afraid I gave you a wrong lead yesterday in regard to the fire at the laboratory. About Conlon, you mean? Yes. He's not the man you're looking for. Perhaps not, but he keeps some pretty strange company for an honest chemist. How do you know Conlon is in the clear? I have some new information, Commander. All right, let's have it. I can give it to you over the phone. I'll explain in detail when you get here. When I get there? It's very urgent, and I can't come to your office. Where are you? At my home, 618 Orion Way. It's just two blocks west of Terra Boulevard. I can't possibly tell you any more right now. I just have to talk to you personally. Right away. Another hour may be too late. All right, Miss Randall, I'll be there in 15 minutes. Corey out. I wonder what you found out. She didn't sound excited or in danger. From what I've seen of her, Modest Randall seems pretty level-headed and confident. Something's wrong. I'd better get over there. Have you stay here in case we get a lead on Van Cairn. Yes, sir. I'll check back with you from Miss Randall's place. Come in, Commander. Thank you, Miss Randall. Good of you to come so quickly. It certainly was, Commander. Get your hands up. Thank you. Yes. Just remember there are two ray guns covering you. This one and one in the next room. What's the setup here, Miss Randall? Are you in the Zanko? I? I in the Zanko? Marty, sit down. Sit down and remain quiet. Yes, Zanko. What have you done to her? Have you ever heard of Formula G3K? Got her under the influence of that chemical. Exactly. You're next. Helen! Yeah. Come in here and bring the infuser. Okay. So you're Conlon. You were with Zanker at the warehouse. That's right, Corey. I've got quite a score to settle with both of you for what you tried to do to Happy and me. Conlon, I'll keep him covered while you use the infuser on him. Roll up your sleeve, Corey. This won't hurt a bit. Come on, let's have that arm. Sure. <laughs> you're not going to shoot that stuff into me. <laughs> Zanker, get him off me. Use the ray gun. No, that's what's putting him out too long. Break loose, Zanker. Drop that gadget, Conlon. Zanker, do something. <laughs> Him. This chair will blow him back. Oh. There. Nearly broke my wrist. Never mind that. Pick up the infuser. I want Corey under control when he comes to. All right. I'm not sure the chemical will work on him. Of course it will. Now, Martis, you just sit there and keep quiet. Yes, then. Or his arms already. Use the infuser. Okay. Ah. Very neat, this ultrasonic infuser. Doesn't even break the skin or leave a mark. I think he's coming too. Good. We'll give the chemical time to take effect. Then we'll give him his instructions. Space Patrol Headquarters, Commander Corey's office. Cadet Happy here. Happy, this is Commander Corey. Yes, sir. Everything all right? Everything's under control, Happy. Now listen carefully. Go to the spaceport immediately and see that Terra 5 is ready to blast off. Yes, sir. Where are we going? I'm going alone, Happy. Just learned something very interesting. I'll tell you about it when I get back. Fine, Commander. For the time being, no one is to know about this flight. No one, understand? Yes, sir. I'll give special instructions to space control when I get to the spaceport. Now, one more thing. I've got an errand for you to run. There are some papers in file H7 on the Henderson case. Take them to the research records division and have six microfilm copies made of them. Research records? That's in the Michelson building on the south side of the city, isn't it? Right. Wait there until the job's done, then deliver those microfilms to the first six addresses on the distribution sheet. Got that? Yes, sir, but I thought the Henderson case was... I'm in a hurry, Hap. Just follow orders. Well, yes, sir. I'll go to the spaceport right away and check the ship. Fine, Hap. Corey, out. Half an hour later, at the Terra spaceport, Commander Corey strides toward the Terra 5. With him are two men who walk close to Buzz, watching him carefully as he returns the salutes of various space patrol personnel. The men engage in light conversation, masking their tenseness, until they board the spaceship and close the hatch. <sighs> well, worst of it's over, Zanker. Yeah. All right, Corey. Get to the controls and blast off. I'll check with space control. You are making a special flight to Mars, to Lowell City. Is that clear? Perfect, man. This flight is to be logged under secret operations until further official notice. Jack. All right. Get busy. You trust me? Sure. Can you handle that call to the cadet just as I instructed? With the G3K and him, he'll follow orders to the latter. Yeah, I hope so. I still think we should have brought the girl along, though. What for? She served her purpose. The way we tied her up in her apartment. 
We'll be safely away from her long before she gets loose. <laughs> it's a great idea you're making Corey take us in his own ship. Cheer her. And even if we had been recognized, who's going to interfere with the business of the commander-in-chief of this space patrol? Commander Corey aboard Terra 5 calling space control. Space control here. Go ahead, Commander. Request permission to blast off immediately. Destination Mars. Space lock number two is clear, sir. Log this flight under secret operations file until further notice. Enter two unidentified civilian passengers under technical space patrol custody as per regulation 185-D. Very good, Commander. May blast off when ready. Space control out. Great. When we're clear of Terra, we'll order Corey to change vector for Jupiter's fourth moon. High rockets, Corey! Corey doesn't know it, Conlon, but this is his last flight. Cadet Happy stands before the door of an apartment at 618 Orion Way. On his face, an expression of worried indecision. For he has deliberately disobeyed an order from Commander Corey. Finally, his mind made up, he knocks at the door. Who is it? Get that happy. Is Commander Corey there? No. Will you open the door? I want to talk to you. Come in. It's locked. I say it's locked. You'll have to let me in. I can't. I'm tied up. You mean you're busy? No, tied up with rope. Smoking rockets. Why didn't you say so? Miss Randall. Miss Randall, what happened? Who did this? Dan Core and Conman. Where's Commander Corey? Wasn't he here? Uh, Miss Randall, answer me. Where's the commander? I... Uh, I don't know. Well, look, you called the commander at his office. Uh, then he called me. Did he call from here? I... Uh, I don't know. Now, look, uh, don't be afraid, Miss Randall. No one's going to hurt you. Where are Zankel and Conman? They... They've gone to Mars. Mars? They made the commander take them. Uh, they, they made him phone me and get the ship ready, right? Uh, I... Well, you said they were going to Mars. Now, whereabouts on Mars? Lowell City? Come on, tell me. No, they're not going to Mars. They're going to Jupiter's fourth moon. Let's have it straight, Miss Randall. Which is it? It's wearing off now. I can tell you the truth. What's wearing off? The formula G3K. They gave something mean to the commander with an ultrasonic infusion. They had us under complete control. All right, they're making the commander take them to Jupiter number four. You're sure of that? Yes. They've got a ship hidden there. When they land, they're going to destroy the Terra 5 and Commander. Not if I can help it. I'm going to get a ship and blast off after them. But they've got a half-hour start. Well, chances are they set a vector for Mars to make it look good. By the time they correct it to a vector for Jupiter 4... But look, every second counts. You're free now. I'm getting to the spaceport. Uh, it's Moon 4, all right. What's your view scope reading, Coy? 50,000 DU. His anchor will be there in less than an hour. Yeah. Well, uh, come back here, come then. I want to talk to you. Okay, what is it? When Corey lands, you make sure our ship is ready to blast off. And I'll finish Corey. Conlon, hmm? look at the rear view scope. What's on that tail? The space patrol cruiser. One of Corey's men must have got suspicious. Well, it's too late to back out now. Commander. Yes? There is a ship approaching directly behind us. Fire your rear space torpedo gun. Fire? Well, that ship? Why? You will destroy that ship immediately. Set the rangefinder. That's it. Gonna do it. Now, fire! It missed. Thank he double crossed us. No, no, I think it's the G3K. The chemical is making him obedient. But it's affecting the higher reasoning center of his brain. He made a mistake. Corey! Fire again! Space Patrol Cruiser T-65 calling the Terra-5. Thank her. I've alerted Jupiter Space Patrol. Play it smart and surrender. Happy. Cadet, happy. Corey! Don't punch the space phone! Commander, if you can hear me, listen. This is happy. If they're ordering you to fire on the ship off your stern, resist. This is a Space Patrol ship. Do you understand? You're under the influence of a chemical. Formula G-3K. Fight it. Happy, but what's he telling me? Commander, fire! That's not happy. You ordered him to stay on terror, remember? It's Cadet Happy. Then he disobeyed your orders. He must be punished. Fire that torpedo. That's it. This time you won't miss. You're right, Zanka. This time I won't miss. Uh, 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 now, Zanka, you're next. Get out 
that happy to Commander Corey. Listen to me, please. Corey here. Everything's under control, Hattie. Oh, what a relief. What about Zanker and Conlon? Well, they won't be giving us any more trouble. I hope that torpedo didn't scare you too much. Who do I thank for the bad marksmanship? For me. The chemical was wearing off. Your voice really snapped me out of it, Hattie. That's good. I, I didn't know what to do. How did you happen to take off after us? Well, it was what you told me about the Henderson file. That case was closed weeks ago, and yet you told me to chase all over town with useless microfilm. I took a chance and checked with Martis Randall. Is he all right? Yes, sir. How come you picked the Henderson file, anyway? Uh, it's lucky I did, but it wasn't intentional. If the D3K formula hadn't deadened my reasoning ability, I might have sent you on a plausible errand. Oh, by the way, under regulations, I can't ignore the fact that you did disobey orders. Um, no, sir, I, I guess not. And according to Regulation 145W, the form of punishment is left to the discretion of the commanding officer. I understand, sir. Very well. Your punishment will consist of a seven-day special duty at the Space Patrol Recreation Camp at Lake Azure on Venus. You'll swim, hike, fish, or play ball not less than one hour each day. And that, cadet, is an order. Yes, sir. Um, uh, uh, yes, sir. Hurry <laughs> <laughs> <Corey> out. <laughs> an action preview of next week's exciting Space Patrol adventure in just a moment. Hi, Space Patrollers. This is Captain Tufeld. And Cadet Happy. I'm reporting to you on Rice Checks. And I'm reporting to you on Wheat Checks. Rice Checks. Triple toasted spreaded rice biscuits that taste mighty good. Tops for taste. That's Rice Checks. Wheat Checks. Boy, they've got a swell whole wheat flavor that can't be beat. Tops for taste. That's Wheat Checks, too. And Rice Checks are made in that modern, bite-sized design for easy eating. It's Tops for size. That's Rice Checks. Wheat checks are bite-sized for super easy eating. Pops for size, too. And after a good nourishing breakfast with checks, rice, or wheat, you'll see their tops for get-up-and-go. Real Space Patrol get-up-and-go like the commander has. Checks, the good word to remember at breakfast time or any time because... They're tops three ways for taste, size, and and get-up-and-go. So look for the red and white checkerboard packages with the picture of the commander or... The swell picture of me on the outside. (laughs) Rice checks, wheat checks. Now, a preview of next week's exciting Space Patrol adventure. Buzz and Happy are aboard the Terra 5 out in space. Joined to the airlock is another ship whose pilot has identified himself as a Space Patrol agent. Maybe the break we need, Commander. Maybe this agent can tell us where to locate Zorba and that spy ship from Tyrana. You'll know in a minute, Happy. A man's in the airlock. Get your hands up, both of you. Zorba. Let's get him, Happy. I want you not to move. Oh. Yeah. That paralyzed array will give us any more nonsense. You are prisoners of war, captives of Tirana. Be sure to join us next week for the thrilling story, Shipment to Tirana, when Rice Checks and Fleet Checks again present Space Patrol. Space Patrol, created by Mike Moser, starring Ed Kemmerer as Commander Corey and Nina Osborne as Cadet Happy, was written by Lou Houston. Produced and directed by Larry Robertson. Executive producer, Helen Moser. Other players were Virginia Hewitt, Bela Kovac, and Ken Mayer. Dick Tufel speaking. Now, don't forget to tune in next Saturday and every Saturday when Rice Checks and Wheat Checks present exciting action on Space Patrol. This program is broadcast for our armed forces overseas through the worldwide facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. Space Patrol came to you transcribed from Hollywood. This is ABC Radio Network.